Hello everyone. Greetings from Dr. Uma. Today I am going to present you a case of posterior cervical huge size fibroid. The size is approximately 12 cm in the length and 10 cm in the width. So we are going to perform laparoscopic myomectomy. The appearance is also called lantern on the top of St. Paul's dome. So the first step in such cases is to visualize ureter as the size of fibroid is huge and when we dissect the myoma we should know the position of ureter. So we have cut round ligament over here and uh, you can see the myoma is almost filling whole of the pelvic cavity. We have only very little space to work. Major vessels are very close to my operative field. So we have to be careful while dissecting. We have to dissect always parallel to these vital structures such as vessel, ureter, internal iliac artery. So the role of assistant is very important in such cases in providing traction just keeping all these vital structures in the mind keep on dissecting parallel and just take small chunks at a time always see what you cut and cut what you see So at this point, I have visualized ureter. My next target is uterine at origin because the effect of vasopressin usually lasts for 20 minutes only. So by coagulating uterines at origin, we will get a bloodless field for longer time. So at this point, it is little difficult to visualize uh, internal iliac artery. So here my assistant is holding ureter and providing traction medially and I am lateralizing vessels and taking uterine at origin. So the same procedure is performed on opposite side. After taking uterines at the origin and visualizing ureter bilaterally, I have injected vasopressin 1 unit in 400 ml of normal saline. The 400 ml of normal saline helps to provide proper hydro dissection in such huge cases and once we take zerosal cuts, the only fluid will come and it will not bleed much. So you can see once I am cutting, I am not facing much of bleeding here. So that that is the beauty of injecting 400 ml of normal saline in bigger sizes of myoma. Being ipsilateral surgeon, keeping suturing in the mind, I have taken transverse incision. Some surgeons comfortable with suturing with the middle port and contralateral suturing, they can opt for vertical incision over myoma and can excise it and suture it. So we apply myoma screw at different position and provide traction and counter traction and then we excise the myoma. Here I am excising myoma with the help of shearer. The benefit of that is we can manage some bleeder once we come across. So till now I have faced hardly 
any bleeding over here as you can see myoma is getting separated nicely so once we work in right plane we don't have to struggle much and don't try to provide undue excessive traction and counter traction just keep on excising small area at a time by applying myoma screw close to the working area so the main principle of surgery is to safeguard ureter and vital structures while we excise the myoma the line of incision does not matter but the good outcome and the safety is one thing that matters so myoma is little soft and in such huge sizes of myoma once we have little suspicion of leiomyosarcoma which is very rare we can get cea alpha fetoprotein ca125 ca153 and serum ldh level once the level of ldh reaches more than 320 we can have suspicion of leiomyosarcoma so in between excision i am looking for ureter where exactly is the position so you can see myoma is very nicely getting separated from its bed one can apply two myoma screw at a time for excising myoma that is surgeon's personal preference only and So here well, we have excised myoma and we can see the bed. So we suction all the blood and clot and we perform suturing with barb suture. The barb is ideal material because we don't have to take knot. That is the system of knotless suturing and tissue gets tightened with the equal tension. at every point so we start suturing from one end to another the double layered suturing is performed in a continuous fashion so also keep on suctioning in between all the clots and bleeder and looking for the position of ureter while suturing we have to keep one thing in the mind that we have to obliterate the dead space nicely so the chances of hematoma formation can be avoided and at this point when we are working close to the angles just keep your ureter in the mind as we have already dissected it we don't have to worry
so as earlier i mentioned that the line of incision does not matter what matters is the good outcome and safety to the patient whatever ways you are comfortable in suturing you can decide the line of incision according to the your suturing skill so after taking deeper layer now superficial layer is being taken and here you can see almost we have restored completely normal anatomy of uterus so after suturing we give a nice wash we perform morselation so after we morselate we don't have to keep even a small chunk of tissue in the peritoneal cavity to avoid future chances of leiomyomatosis now we restore the anatomy of crown ligament Thank you so much for watching the surgery.